Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Now today is Friday. Praise God. I love Fridays. You know why? I always told you this. Every weekend, take the time to go through this word again and again and again. Hearing it once may not do the job. Hearing it once may excite you, but that excitement is not enough to renew your mind. Hearing it again and again, you know what it does? It begins to bring thoughts and mindset. It begins to create an idea in your hearts. You know, like, oh, hold on, hold on. If this is true, then it means this is it. That's what the Word of God does. See, that's how the renewal of the mind takes place. You see, if, if, if this is true, then why am I? If this is right, then this should be. If this is true, then I should. See, what's going on? Your mind is being renewed. Father, we bless you today. We submit our minds to you, Holy Spirit. For a renewal indeed. We have been changed and transformed into the same image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where we see things like him and we do things like him. Thank you because today burdens are indeed being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. Man, praise God. So I showed you yesterday in the book of Joel that something must happen before the out, full outpouring of the Holy Spirit takes place. See, what's going to happen first? I'll tell you what's going to happen. There's going to be a restoration of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm preaching what I'm preaching to you. There's going to be a restoration of your father of god's fatherhood in your life where you know you come to that place of reality where you know and you can say god supplies all my needs you see the lord was speaking to me recently and he said this to me you know you know I, we began this year talking about the importance of tithing now we we can't preach that truth enough because people still find it hard to, people still lack understanding, people still have distrust in their hearts. When you talk about tithing, people you know everybody, well, hey, they've come again, they want to eat our money. I remember talking to someone and and the person said, I, I, you know, during that series, they said, I wish you would just um, preach Christ and not be preaching money and mammon. I thought to myself, this person obviously hasn't listened to the message. So I said, hey, why don't you listen to me? He said, no, I won't listen until you start talking about um, Christ. And I said, so what have you been talking about? Praise God. You know, you, you know, people, you see, be careful when people use big phrases and big words. And, you know, and, and, and something sounds nice. I'm called to preach Christ. And, and when you now get into the substance of their teaching, you realize that they are even in error. They don't know the Christ that they are teaching. It, it, you know, this is, this is really funny. Because sometimes you take, you, you, you want to, you know when you hear, we preach Christ, we preach Christ, we preach Christ, we preach Christ. Who is Christ? You want to ask. See, you can't, hmm, hmm, hmm. this is going to be big, control your balance. You can't say you are called to preach Christ and then with the other side of your mouth you say if it is not in the Bible I will not accept it. You are a big hypocrite. You say what do you mean by that? Is Christ the Bible? Hold on. You say I've been called to preach Christ. And if someone is trying to tell you something, say, hey, I was having fellowship with God and the Lord was teaching me this and the Lord was teaching me this. And they say, oh, hold on, please show me in the Bible. <laughs> and the person said, hey, 
I know it's in the Bible, but I'm telling you what the Holy Spirit was telling me. He said, no, 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 no. I've met people like that, you know. He said, no, 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 no. Show me in the Bible. And then he said, you show them in Scripture. He said, ah, ah, ah. Show me in the New Testament. He, you know, he, you see, ignorance is a bad, it's such a bad thing. And I'll tell you how darkness works. Darkness, see, when, when, when people are blind, ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. What I'm saying is very sensitive, I know. When people are blind, it's not because their eyes are shut, they cannot see. No, 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 no. People are blind because their focus is on a particular thing. So when someone is physically blind, it's not because he cannot see. It's just because he's seeing darkness. That's what he's seeing. That's why a blind man can effectively master himself. And he will know the way even more than you that see with your physical eyes. It's because he's seeing. He's seeing. See, your eyes are open, but you may not be seeing. So when someone wants to blind you, they give you another picture to look at. As long as you are focused on that picture, you become blind to every other thing. And God bless you if that picture that you're looking at is not perfect. You will become so silly because you will be explaining that picture thinking this is the only sight that exists in the world and someone else is looking at you and said, you're such an ignorant human being. Because I am looking at another picture here. And my own picture is bigger than your picture. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. So when, 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 when they begin to say, I preach Christ, I preach nothing but Christ. And then you ask them, what is Christ? They can't really explain. Christ is the Holy Ghost. There is no other definition to give about Christ. He is the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So when you say, I preach Christ, you know what I expect? I expect you to tell me this morning while I was coming for this meeting, Christ began to minister this thing to me that I'm sharing with you right now. Yeah. Uh, what, what about the Bible? Everything Jesus taught, everything Christ is going to say, it will align with the truth of the scriptures. But you don't use the scriptures to judge Christ. You use Christ to understand the scriptures. You need to understand this thing. It's not, you know, so it's about you're saying it's, it's not the same thing. See, if you don't understand what I'm telling you as a preacher, you will get into error. You don't use the scriptures to explain Christ. Uh -oh, you don't use the scripture to judge what Christ has said to you. No, no, no. You use Christ to understand the scriptures. I will tell you why. The scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, they were written many years ago. And they've been translated in different languages. Now, so uh, to a great extent, in translation, some things are missed. If you know this, if you know this is the truth. Even in literature, it's the same thing. Stories are told. The more the stories are retold, the more certain essence are being removed from it. See? Now, until you get to someone who is closest to the original, and they begin to tell you the mind of the author and you begin to say wow now for example you you read the bible you read all these things and and you you have an idea and, and, and you now take a trip to israel and you travel there and they take you to some of these sites and they begin to explain some of the things to you physically they show you this is where this is this. This is where this happened. And then you begin to think about it like, wow, now I understand what this Bible passage says. 
You see, they took it on that experience. And then your understanding was open. Your understanding was increased. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when we walk with Christ, now, he is the one that I've been there from the beginning. When he tells you something, you believe him. And with what he has told you, you look at the scriptures again and you begin to see, oh, now I understand. Oh, yeah, 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 now I understand what Paul said. Now I understand what Moses said. Now, oh, I see now. Then what happens? You increase in knowledge. But when you hear it, <laughs> ah, ah, Holy Spirit, no, 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 that's not what the Bible said. The Bible said this, and the Bible said that. You know what you're doing? <laughs> you know what you're doing? You are rejecting truth. I pray you will understand what I'm saying to you. It will help you. It will help the church grow. So the reason the church seems to be going to, like we're going up and then suddenly we crash. We go up and suddenly we crash. Like there is no direction. God has a program for the church. And the program is clear. It is clear. But when we begin to argue scriptures, we don't see it. We shouldn't argue scriptures. We should talk about what Christ is saying to us. That is to preach Christ. I was telling you something. You know, the Lord was saying something to me. He said, the next 10 years, the beginning from now, from this 2001, 2021, excuse me, the next 10 years, it says God's children are going to experience a great dimension of prosperity. But there is something that we need to put in place if that prosperity will lead to the real outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because God is giving us a 10-year window again. And then there's going to be the outpouring of the Spirit. Now, now I want you to follow this. Because the Lord said to me, now I'm teaching you Christ. Now I'm telling I'm, I'm preaching Christ now. Praise God. The Lord said to me, in the year 2000, He opened a door of finances for the church. And there was so great blessing. Now, how did that blessing start? It started from the prophesying. From the prophesying. You know, as people began to teach prosperity, people began to teach, you know, God can raise you up. People began to teach. And then God began to prosper his children. God began to prosper his children. But there was something missing in that whole, from the, from the year 2000, there was something missing in that line of teaching. An expression and that's why corruption was able to set in what was that thing that was missing the tithes see we didn't understand tithing when that prosperity came so what happened so we were not tithing right see people were paying their tithe yes but they were not tithing right so what happened the prosperity didn't flow among God's children rather it flowed into institutions thank you Holy Spirit Listen, I'm going to start explaining this from next week. But now we are getting into the essence of what I've been teaching you, everything I've been teaching. But get this from me. So, so because we missed it, where Titan is concerned, the prosperity didn't flow down. Rather, we were trying to use the prosperity to build up something. So, from the year 2000, many church institutions began to rise. They began to do big things. They began to prosper and they began to raise symbols. You understand what I'm saying? They began to raise symbols. So we'll build, build a big church. We'll build the biggest church. We'll, we'll build our church. is fantastic. So we begin to talk about the church. We begin to talk about the building. We begin to talk about all those things. Yet, the list of God's children were struggling. Now, that's what God wants to address in this new season. And that's what we'll begin to talk about next week. Listen, God has done everything for your blessing. And listen to me, you must enter that blessing and enjoy it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.